All right, hey everyone. Uh, this is Todd back here for another update um, in my uh, ongoing journey with hypercussis and hearing loss. Um, <clears throat> it has been an interesting, long journey and it's been a while since my uh, last update so there's a lot of things to talk about i've just recently passed the year mark uh, last july 7th was when my uh incident at work occurred and so i'm gonna get right to it um first uh just a quick recap of what happened i've got this will be my fourth video it may be my last uh, you can watch the first one to see sort of the progression in the other ones. Um, so on July 7th last year at work at a part-time job where I worked as a mechanic, I had an incident where I was actually wearing hearing protection, very hot day, cutting a piece of uh, metal off of a suspension part on a vehicle and uh, with a high-speed cutter couple different high-speed cutters. It was a difficult job. And, uh, you know, they make a very piercing high-pitched sound. As I said, I was wearing ear protection. I uh, got done with that. And after that, things were never really the same. Uh, I had a dissonance uh, in certain frequencies that I was hearing. I had a hypersensitivity to normal sounds. <clears throat> I had a lot of pain that felt like it was deep in my ear canal and I had this for a very long time had this ongoing feeling of um, inflammation and heat e even in the inside of my ear canal like you know I put my finger in there and you know just weird things and I'd feel like it was hot all the time so you, you can look at my earlier videos videos for a longer recap of that I also believe uh, during this period that I had a, an acute hearing loss related to the same incident. I'm a lifelong musician, so, you know, my hearing was already, uh, as most musicians are when they get to my age, uh, was already, you know, something I, I needed to be careful about. And, I, and I've been careful my whole life, uh, always wearing earplugs. So anyway... Since the last update, um, <clears throat> mostly positive stuff, uh, and and I'm feeling pretty good. So the dissonance that I call it, the weird frequency thing that I've had, uh, that would show itself a lot in places when I was talking to people, they were sitting close to me. And then the ambient sound around me, as some of you may be well acquainted with, it's hard to describe. And at the same time, it's very much upfront about, you know, with what's going on with you. So that has almost completely subsided. Uh, what I'm, what I am currently left with is... A, an understanding of more hearing loss. It's not terrible. Um, I will definitely need ear, uh, ear uh, hearing aids in the future. I, I could use them now, but uh, I compensate very well, and right now I'm, I'm okay with it. But um, in the future, I will definitely be using hearing aids and they're expensive. Uh, luckily for all of us that might have to deal with this situation, uh, the over-the-counter hearing aid uh, thing is happening and the prices are coming down. Uh, one, one note about that, I've ended up uh, doing a lot of research on hearing aids. Um, Dr. Cliff, I would check out his, uh, his website. He's a... Uh, um, He's not an audiologist. Well, I don't know. Maybe he's just an audiologist. I'm sorry. And sorry, Dr. Cliff, that I, I don't know what your qualifications completely are. But regardless, <clears throat> um, 
check him out. He reviews everything. He's it's a very good channel. Don't get taken. You know, it's it's hard enough to make good decisions on um, hearing aids, but we don't want to make the wrong decision on cheap hearing aids and have to buy them again. So it ends up costing just what it it would anyway. You know, in the past. So that's just a quick note about that. So. Um, the last, well, hopefully, I, I don't know if it'll be the last thing, but it's feeling like it's getting closer to the last thing on my journey, most recently, in the last several months, was a really difficult bout with pain um, that felt like it was, again, this ongoing pain in my sort of inner ear feels almost muscular, muscular and inflammatory. Inflammatory is just the word for, for me. And uh, hopefully if, if you're dealing with the same thing, I can, you know, you'll, you'll find some wisdom in what I'm trying to uh, talk about here. And I think that I, I'm wondering if a lot of these processes are an acute inflammatory episode um, that needs to be approached that way so that we can make the right moves to get it under control. So for me, as I said, when I did this, it was a really hot day. Um, earmuffs on uh, for protecting my hearing. Everything was hot. Just, you know, hot, hot, hot. And that's what it felt like for a long, long time. Like I could not get out of this, um, this cycle of things being inflamed and hot. So along the way... Um, courses of steroids, which let me just throw a quick note out there right now about this. If you are finding this video and you are, have just had an acute event, meaning, you know, a very close to this time proximity event that is happening right now, and you are right in the middle of it and you have not went to the emergency room or to your primary care provider and told them that you have had an acute hearing event, Turn this off and go now because don't do what I did. I waited far too far longer than I should have. I should have gotten steroids right away to knock that inflammatory process down, to knock down all of the chemical events going on in your inner ear that can lead to um, those hairs on your cochlea dying. We want to prevent this as much as possible. So, that's just a side note, but I'm dead serious about it. Stop, turn this off, get in your car, and go. Cancel work, do whatever you have to do. Don't put it off. So, that said, I was continuing to have pain. Down radiating, radiating through my jaw, um, into my jaw, back of my neck, manifesting as, as sometimes um, uh, migraine headaches. Now, whether or not this was me compensating for other things and then putting tension here, or this is just the cycle that I'm in, that's what I was in. And I was, so I had another course of steroids. Steroids can be difficult to deal with sometimes. Uh, the last course didn't go well. I was really not tolerating it well. Uh, I went to see several doctors. I had change insurance, so that gave me a little better options. Ran across just... Some really good advice, even though I'm a nurse and I'm very aware of these things, sometimes it's hard to separate yourself from what's going on and just get a clear picture. I had a doctor who just basically took a long history and said, okay, you know, this is what's going on here. And it became apparent that I was not being my best advocate for this in some ways. I work out often, I mountain bike, I road bike. I was still trying to play in my band that I was in, even though we had dropped it down to like an acoustic level, but I was singing still and playing drums. I had come up with a, a very quiet sort of, uh, using brushes, a quiet sort of a kit. But as anybody knows who sings and plays in a band, even with uh, hearing protection in when you're singing, inside your canals it's it's quite loud you hear yourself really well you get this canal effect um, 
So when that was all looked at in total, it was kind of like, basically the end result was, I was never giving everything a rest, which is really hard for me to do. I'm active, I'm driven, I'm kind of a, I don't like sitting still. So um, it led to sort of a, a sort of, you know, this has to happen moment. So I stopped working out. I stopped lifting weights, stopped biking, stopped the band, started taking ibuprofen at prescription doses, which is 800 milligrams three times a day, uh, staying really well hydrated. If you are taking um, ibuprofen or NSAIDs at these, these sort of prescription doses, absolutely make sure that you are eating uh, when you take them. They will chew up your stomach like crazy. So just another side note. And um, so what this led to is just doing anything I could to get this calmed down. But my hearing, it started feeling better. The hypercussis has started feeling better. I was no longer the only time now that I wear hearing protection is when I'm in a loud environment that is louder than it should be and could cause damage. Or when I'm driving, I'm still very sensitive to driving long distances. And so I use um, noise canceling headphones when I drive. That's it. And absolutely number one ahead of anything else that I can tell you to reacclimate yourself from this neurological experience that you're having and getting yourself back to a normal as normal right normal may never be normal completely again but you want as normal as you can possibly get to and again I said I'm a year out from this so it's a long journey but in a year's time, I'm feeling in incredibly positive about where I'm at. So, no hearing protection because we want to raise the threshold of our comfort level. We don't want to decrease the threshold. If we wear hearing protection, we're decreasing the threshold. You don't need hearing protection if it's not going to damage your hearing. Again, you don't need it. So stop. There's just no way around that. It's, it's a hard stop. So I had done that. The other thing in this whole, my whole belief that this is an inflammatory issue is I started realizing that I was really having, like, that lends itself to thinking it was uh, inflammatory, is when I would pop my ears. Now, if you don't know how to pop your ears by putting pressure, plugging your nose, Kind of breathing out, which puts pressure back into your uh, middle ear, and then you can swallow and open up your mouth like a yawn, like a swallow with a yawn, to relieve that pressure through your eustachian tube that exits down in your throat. I realized I'd never had a problem doing this before, but I realized they weren't, it wasn't clearing. I could pop my ears really fast. It wasn't clearing, especially in my right ear. And uh, it was kind of getting the squeaking sound sometimes when I would try to clear it, which led me to believe, sort of run the, the um, extrapolation of this is, this is an inflammatory event. Well, just like if you hurt your hand, everything gets, you know, as I've said before in other videos, everything gets inflamed around it. It may take a very long time of sort of moving your hand around to get everything that's been inflamed and there's a chemical process that happens in our body for inflammation to get things moving again, to change that. And I thought maybe that's the same thing that's going on with my um, eardrum when I'm popping my ears is that maybe the eardrum's not moving well. Maybe that's causing this weird vibration that's then causing the strange sound that gives me this weird frequency sound. Maybe that's part of what is, is making 
the hypercussis sort of feeling of being overwhelmed by normal sounds. So I spent, as I said, I stopped working out, stopped doing anything that would cause inflammation, taking ibuprofen three times a day, every day, hydrating really well, relaxing. And then I was doing the thing where I was popping my ears many, many times a day to get everything moving in there. And that all of a sudden seemed to have a really positive effect. So, again, it's following the lines of, you know, how do we deal with inflammation? If this was a hand injury, it would make total sense. I think we get a little, we don't follow the same lines when it's something we can't see and it's something that's kind of foreign. Sometimes it's our inner ear, but it seems to be following the same path. So, that has brought, oh, oh, okay, sorry. That has brought me to where I'm at right now. Where I'm at right now is the last leftover sort of thing I have is, you might, you might hear it, my throat, and this has been in the whole, you know, in the whole grouping of everything, sort of ears, the micro muscles and, and things that are going on in my inner ear, down through my neck, jaw. And then I, for a long time, I've had this thing that corresponds directly with the timeline and everything else here where, and I think this came with me singing in my band, that uh, my throat was always bothering me. I was always <clears throat> clearing my throat, swallowing a lot feeling like sometimes I had something in my throat that I couldn't get out. Again, an inflammatory thing. And how do you know it's inflammatory? Well, one of the things that you can do is, if you take that, if you're taking steroids, or if you're taking a prescription dose of ibuprofen or something like that, um, if you get relief from that, those things decrease inflammation. So it's, it's leading you down that track immediately. That if you're getting relief from something that decreases inflammation, like an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, then, and then it comes back after that wears off, it's an inflammatory process. How do we stop that? We stop the overuse, we stop aggravating it, and we give it a break with, with anti-inflammatories. So where I'm at right now is I still have that kind of going on. A little hoarse. Um, some of this just might have been severe over aggravation by me continuing to sing in the band. That, that I think that's the, the main culprit here. And all this inflammation that was happening because of the primary injury. So again, no singing, just resting this and I've had to kind of take it you know sometimes you got to really go at something to knock it down and you've got to give it time so I love hot foods I've been laying off of hot foods I like to drink soda uh, you know a, a couple a couple a day makes me really happy but the carbonation I wondered if it was really making this worse I stopped that um, <clears throat> Caffeine, I wondered if that was making the tension in my neck worse and then uh, leading to a, a, a bigger issue. So, cut my caffeine way down. No soda intake. Uh, no carbonated beverages. Um, and cut my hot food intake down. So, sometimes that's what we have to do to get to the bottom of these things. It sucks. It definitely affects the quality of your life. It's not a big thing to give these things up, but you know, as everybody knows, when this goes on for a long period of time, you get really tired of this dominating your life. So if you're really tired of this dominating your life, I understand. But let's, let's take a step back from this. A year ago, all bullshit aside, I was almost suicidal. I had a night where I came really close to committing suicide. 
I didn't think I could deal with this anymore. I didn't think anybody would, could really understand it. I felt like I was locked in a cage by myself and I couldn't get out. And it was a shitty, terrible cage. A year later, it's incredibly better. But it has taken a focus for that year. And it's taken a lot of discipline. So don't get discouraged. But also be honest about staying on the track. Get rid of the hearing protection when you don't need it. Get rid of the hearing protection when you don't need it. Get yourself out, walk around, go talk to people. Even though it sucks, you can tell them. Say, hey, I got this thing going on, I'm a little distracted. But you need them. You need interaction, you need people, you need this thing to be going on. Um, if you believe you have a, a thing going on like me, like it's an inflammatory process, or think way back to when it started, if it was an inflammatory process, did you have a big loud noise that went off? Did you have something that happened that really affected it? And try everything. Now, when I say try everything, I don't mean try potentially dangerous things that you, you might take or ingest or whatever. You know, I'm not talking about that. Be smart. But I'm saying, like, like I've had to do, stop doing some of the things you're doing that might aggravate it. Uh, popping the ears. I, I, you know, really try that. Try moving things around. This is it's how we can move things around in here. Try, um, you know, really like jaw relaxation techniques to really take care of this area of your body, and get get massages if you can do that. If you can afford to do that. If you can't. Get a roller or something like that to, to massage, uh, do the massage yourself. Take uh, anti-inflammatories and um, try to find the things that work for you that help you to enjoy your life. I don't care how small it is. Just find the thing that you like to do that distracts you on a daily basis from this a little bit, even if it's not you're not completely distracted. I know how this is. You know, it's like somebody doing this to you all day long. It never goes away. But anything that just gets you to that place where you can say, okay. And if, and if you really find yourself in a bad place, go see a therapist. I can't recommend that, you know, any, any more than, than, than I could. I, I just, I've, I've seen therapists my whole life. Uh, and so it's nothing new to me, but maybe it's new to you and it feels weird. Go talk to somebody about how you're feeling. Things like this can cause isolation. They can cause despair. They can really put you in a crappy spot. And these changes happen slowly. You know, they're the kind of changes that happen where one day you wake up and you don't even notice that some aspect of this has gone away. And then three days later, you're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm doing better. And, and then usually you feel worried that it's going to come right back. But we're just looking for changes. And changes can come in two different ways. It can get worse or it can get better. Worse doesn't mean necessarily something bad. If it's worse, then stop. Take, take a good break. If you notice you wake up one day and you're like, Wow, this is really bad today. Stop and really take a look at what happened the day before or two days before. Like for me. Uh, wake up and things are worse. My throat hurts. My hearing seems worse. I feel tense and tight in, in my jaw and in, and in my upper inner ear. Well, okay. I, you know, I worked out three days ago hard. I had band practice the day before. I worked my night shift after that. I didn't get a lot of sleep, and big surprise, everything's fired up again. So get really honest about yourself, about what's going on, and then just work slowly at bringing it back. But if it can move in one direction, it can move in the other direction. That's what I'm getting at. So, 
Get yourself out. Don't overprotect your hearing. Anti-inflammatories. Getting yourself a therapist if you need one. Getting yourself out there around people so you are not isolated and slowly making progress forward. That's all we're trying to do. So a year later, here's where I'm at. I hope that I've helped anybody, somebody, and uh, I will, I'll do another update, but it'll probably be quite some time because I'm feeling pretty good and I think I'm in a good spot. Uh, but my journey with hearing is not over. And the next big thing will probably be hearing aids at some point. I'm definitely a vain guy, so I'll be getting something that's, uh, you know, in, in, or in the ear canal, hidden type uh, hearing aids from my research for me. Uh, just in case you're going down this line, the Ergo, E-A-R-G-O, the Ergo hearing in, in the canal hearing aids are what I'm kind of leaning towards. They seem like they're the um, most affordable, uh, best choice for me, but we'll see. So um, I hope that this helps you guys. I hope that uh, all my information has helped and uh, good luck with everything and send any questions, comments. I try to answer them as soon as I can. All right. Take care. Thanks.